Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice radical equation. We have x squared minus 4 equals the square root of x plus 4, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, even though I'm going to talk about different alternatives within the first method, I guess. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to do brute force, square both sides. You usually do that with radical equations, don't you? I mean, you want to get rid of all the radicals and turn this into a polynomial equation. x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 16. You probably know the formulas. If not, go ahead and check them out. And then I want to use two different approaches here within uh, the first method. One of them is going to be solving a cortic by turning it into something a little bit more measurable. In other words, we're going to turn this into a cubic equation. Okay, so here's how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and isolate x to the fourth. And then add something to both sides so that the left hand side becomes a perfect square. You know, there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can add something like this to both sides, 2k x squared plus k squared, which will make this a perfect square. And if you add the same thing on the right hand side, it's going to look like this, oops, plus 2k x squared plus k squared. So this, this is what we're adding to both sides, okay? Now, left hand side now becomes x squared plus k quantity squared. The right hand side, we can put these two together, eight plus two K times X squared, and then plus X plus K squared minus 12, which is our constant term in this case. And now the left hand side is a perfect square. So the right hand side also needs to be a perfect square. And in order to make it a perfect square, because this is quadratic, the discriminant needs to be zero. Make sense? So what's the discriminant or delta in other words? Looks like a triangle, doesn't it? B squared minus 4AC. C is the constant, K squared minus 12. Now, if you set this equal to zero, you're going to get a cubic equation from here. Let me tell you what you're going to get. You're going to get an equation like this. 8K cubed plus 32K squared minus 96K minus 385 which comes from 4 times 8 times 12 plus 1 equals 0. Good luck solving this cubic because who knows what kind of solutions it has. Does it have any rational solutions? Well, you can still try to get rid of k squared and use the cubic formula. You know, there's a couple of different ways to approach it. But this is one way to approach it. I don't know if you're going to get something nice from here. I haven't tried it. I'm going to leave it up to you, okay, as an exercise. I know some people hate that, but don't hate me for that. The other approach that we can use is just deal with the cortic directly. Why don't we just write it in full form x to the fourth minus 8x squared minus x plus 12 equals 0. That's our cortic and notice that there's no x cubed which makes this a depressed cortic, right? This cortic is under depression. So it's a little easier to solve for that reason. And also, because there's no x cubed, uh, we can try to factor it. I mean, if there are any factors with rational or integer coefficients, of course, the best case scenario is integers. I'm hoping that, oops, you weren't supposed to see that. So my goal is going to be to factor this um, into two nice factors, such as what? Well, x squared and then ax and then plus b, and the other one is x squared minus ax plus c. Why do I use plus ax and minus ax? Because there's no x cubed. How do you get x cubed? You can only get it by multiplying these terms, therefore x cubed will cancel out. This is the nice thing about it, because we have only three variables. That's also going to give us a cubic equation, but I'm hoping that this equation will be easier to solve. You know what? Because it has nice factors. Okay, makes sense? So go ahead and proceed with this 
and hopefully you're gonna get the values of ABC. I can quickly show you what that's gonna look like. If you distribute the whole thing, ignore X cubed, by the way. So you can continue with CX squared and then minus A squared X squared plus ACX plus BX squared minus ABX plus BC. Let's go ahead and put like terms together. This one, this one, and that one. So plus C plus B minus A squared, that's gonna be the coefficient of X squared. And by the way, this is always gonna be the same. So if you just memorize it, you memorize it, okay? And then we have AC minus AB as the coefficient of X. And then at the end, we have BC. Now, notice that if you set this equal to our cortic X to the fourth minus eight X squared minus X plus 12, what do you realize? You realize that, uh-oh, the coefficient of x squared is negative 8, and the coefficient of x is negative 1, and the constant term is 12. So if b, c are integers, you can definitely test it out, but let me show you. c plus b minus a squared equals negative 8, and then here you can actually factor out an a and get c minus b from here, and then from basically from here you can write c minus b as negative 1 over a, and c plus b as a squared minus 8. And by working on these, uh, pretend that A is a constant in this case. Well, it is, but anyways, just solve for C and B. Make sense? Add them up, divide by 2, subtract, divide by 2, and you'll get B and C in terms of A. Then you can plug it into this one. Or there is a better way to do it. Just guess and check. If B, C is 12, there's only so many ways you can do this, right? For example, and oh, by, the, by the way, you want A to be an integer, right? So what do you think A is going to be? I mean, negative, because C and B are integers, so that's an integer, this is an integer. So A is either plus 1 or minus 1, you see? And just test it out. I mean, make some values like 3 and 4. The product is 12, right? Their sum is 7. If A squared minus 8 is 7, that means A squared is 15. Nope, it's not going to work. And then try with 2 and 6, and then 1 and 12. And then try the negatives, negative 3 and negative 4. You see, at some point, you're going to get an answer. Guess which one? Negative 3 and negative 4 is going to give you a sum of negative 7 from here. And that is equal to a squared minus 8, which means a squared equals 1, which means a is equal to 1 or a is equal to negative 1. Definitely, that's verified by the second equation. But then, which one is which doesn't matter, okay? Or does it? I guess it doesn't, but I could be wrong. And then from here, you can basically get the factors. And let me tell you what those factors are going to look like. They're going to look like this, okay? Yay, so it wasn't too hard, right? And then you can just go off of this, set equal to this, and you're going to be solving two quadratics. Since we're going to do this one more time, you don't need to do it here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, because the second method is really, really, really cool. I can't emphasize that enough, okay? That's why this problem was made, for solely for that purpose, I think. Anyways, we're going to set d is equal to y, and you're like, why? There's a good reason, because if you notice, this assumption gives us x squared minus 4 equals y, first of all. Nice. Let's record it. And then from here, we get x plus 4 equals y squared, and then finally, y squared minus 4 equals 4, or 4 equals y squared minus 4. Oops, I messed up. There's a mistake. Okay, 4 equals y squared Wait a minute, that's not what I was trying to do. What am I trying to do? Okay, I'm, I'm trying to subtract 4 from both sides. Okay, here we go. Uh, so x is y squared minus 4. Okay, that's what I was trying to get. Let's try it in a different way. Write the y squared minus 4 first equals x. You see, from an equation, we got into a system which is very, very, very easy to solve. You know how? Subtract these equations. Okay, x squared minus 4 minus y squared minus 4 equals y minus x. Negative 4 and positive 4 cancels out. x squared minus y squared. Add these up. Plus x minus y equals 0. Uh-oh. This is factorable by difference of two squares. Beautiful. And we can factor out a 1 here all the time. Now x minus y is a common factor. Notice that. We can pull it out, which means x is equal to y, by the way. But anyways, let's get to that. x plus y plus 1 equals 0. From here, you get y equals x or y equals negative x minus 1. But at the same time, we know that y is equal to, what, x squared minus 4, indirectly, right? Yay! So we can replace y with x squared minus 4 equals x. This means x squared minus x minus 4 equals 0. And here, if you do that, 
x squared minus 4 is equal to negative x minus 1. x squared plus x minus 3 equals 0. Does that ring a bell? It should, because those are the exact same factors that we found with the first method, part B, or 1B. Uh, well, I should have used it for 2B, so I can say 2B, but I can still say 2B or not to be, okay? So you get the idea, but the problem is, we'll, we'll see the problem when we look at the results from, well, from alpha, first of all, the graph, uh-oh, there are two intersection points. Wait a minute, did we get two, solu I mean, four solutions from two quadratics? Yes, but some solutions do not work. You know why? That's for you to find out, okay? I'm not gonna tell you, but if you know, let us know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus B, I. You know what it is, hopefully. And bye-bye.